Um, ladies and gentlemen, yes, thank you so much for joining. And um, I'm Silver and Sidiel, and I'm joined with um, Dr. David Burton, Keisha Allen, and Kima Allen as well. If anyone have anything um, on, I would like for you to kindly just, uh, um, what should I say, turn it off. Now, the wheels of justice is turning, or are the wheels of justice turning? And the reason why I put that question today is you have seen the news. And on the news, you have seen one, Cecil Rhodes, the statue has been officially designated to be taken down through the official structure. Not like the other guy where they just throw him in the water. And secondly, what you have had is two banks, two banks today in the papers saying that they are sorry for their bank or their company uh, somewhat activities in slavery. So what they're gonna do, they're gonna be encouraging people companies, black organizations to approach them and for charity. Now, Rashad Brooks, is that his name? Is that his, that his correct name, um, David? Yeah, Rashad Brooks, yeah, Rashad Brooks, Rashad Brooks in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yes, recent, um, oh, fully, uh, fully shot and killed him recently and quickly charged 11 times, that's the, the police. Floyd, George Floyd, recently as well, as you know about the knee, got killed torture, snuffed out, and four police have been charged. Things are moving very really fast. Even President Trump has jumped in on the, on the action. The, the, the chokehold, which the police use, is now illegal, and now it is completely not to be used in the States. Now, I'm joined by um, my colleague, which is here, um, and I'm just going to say something briefly. Um, first of all, I've got Miss Kima Allen, and Kima is a political activist and HR specialist. Kima has a good suit for local elections and have campaigned on various issues, particularly health and social care. I'm also joined by Keisha Allen. As you can see, there's a slight similarity with both of them. They look somewhat a bit different, but they slightly look similar. Um, proud mom of one and wife. She has a background in a number of disciplines, including law and international development. Her expertise lies in corporate governance, data protection, and legacies. Keisha is also entrepreneur and director of a family-owned business. And of course, our regular guests on the show, um, I would say more than likely, I would say my co-host very soon, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. David Byrne, Mr. Byrne, ophthalmologist. We, we come on regular and we talk about um, COVID-19, where we're going to COVID-19, sort of breaking it down. So tonight, I'm, I'm changing the game now and to really look at this issue about are the wheels of justice turning? Now, I'll put it out to you guys now. Um, you have seen the news and you've heard what is happening now. Are the wheels of justice turning? And I'll put this first to Kima because I want to hear how your mic sound. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, hi, still. Um, thank you for having me tonight um, on your show. Um, it's an interesting question that I think um, we've got to look at where we've mm -hmm. come. And yes, we've come from a very far place, um, 400 years of slavery, but also recently with the Black Lives Matter protest and mm -hmm. the uprising of um, a lot of the political consciousness um, and the social injustice that's been happening to Black and ethnic minorities, particularly Black people around the globe for a long time. I think yeah. now what's happened to George Floyd has triggered something within all of us and really to look at ourselves and really to think, you know, all the oppression that we've come, um, we've had to deal with. Um, that, you know, we, 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 we as a people, obviously, we are fed up and we're tired. And, you know, it, it just, it's almost like in a kettle where it's, um, it's tippling over. So I, I think if whether the wheels of justice turn in, I think we are making progress. I think now we've got to begin to think about how we use what's happening quite recently to begin to have a real and honest conversations because I think that's what's been missing in the media for such a long time now. Mm. I think when it comes to race, it's quickly sort of pushed under the uh, carpet, particularly in the workplace in terms of in the justice system, in the education system, in the healthcare. Um, so there is a lot of injustices that's been happening for a long time. So yes, now I think because of the protests and what's been happening around the globe, um, now we're beginning to have, we have to have those conversations. So I think it's a, bit, it's, it's a start in the uh, process. Yeah. 
but it's a long way to go. Okay, well, one of the first thing I also want to say, I want to invite my guests also to be on the red chair and to be um, on the side there. I've got Mr. Winston Bart from Jamaica, as you can see what he said. The wheels are definitely turning, but he's saying too slow. You know, the wheels are definitely turning, but he's saying too slow. Now, Keisha, the wheels of justice, how, how is it turning? Is it too slow or is it turning? What, what, are you, what do you say about this? Thank you for having me. Oh, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, thank yeah, you for having me as well on your show, um, CDL. Um, and it's a very good question. Um, and in my opinion, it is it is turning. Um, it is it's it's quite slow. Um, we uh, within the black community have waited for a very long time to start seeing um, the the the. Uh, to, to start seeing how people are responding to our concerns. Um, yeah. And um, in terms of the justice, I believe just, I believe justice is, is a very subjective, um, it, it's subjective and it's it, what might be justice for you might be a different, might be different, different for me. And, and so um, in terms of, you know, what's currently happening, and, and Kima talk about the length of time given from 400 years of slavery to now. Um, some people may want justice to be a simple apology or simple acceptance of actually what had happened, the atrocities mm -hmm. over the years, um, the recognition of the fact that we have a, a group of people um, from a particular race that has been ex enslaved and haven't been, um, um, rep rep um, the reparations or uh, acknowledgement mm -hmm. for those crimes but that particular crime haven't been acknowledged. And so there's a group of people who would want just a simple apology, maybe from somebody within senior, uh, a senior official, maybe like the Queen, and that might be accepted, that that might be sufficient. Other people may just simply um, appreciate right now that there is a conversation about what had happened. Um, and, and that might be sufficient for some. Other people may just want all the statutes around as well, representation of the slavers um, to, 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 um, to be removed um, and that might be sufficient. Um, but for me, I personally feel that it's, it is it is very slow. It is too slow for what I believe um, we really need um, as, a, as within the black community. And I believe what we need is um, not just acknowledgement of this, uh, of this type of crime, but what we actually need is, um, you know, reparation as in acknowledgement of the financial loss. Um, that can, may be difficult to quantify, but there is there, there there are people who are looking into that, and I feel that until we get to that place, I don't believe that we arrive at the place of justice. Um, yeah. And so, I, as I said, I believe that is sub, is a subjective matter and a subjective, subjective point. And mm -hmm. um, but yeah. it, it is it is getting there to maybe perhaps to that um, you know that that end result which we're we're looking for. Okay, and, and David, <clears throat> what are your initial thoughts? Um, to the topic, are the wheels of justice turning when we look at all the different things which are happening now? Some things are moving a bit faster than normal, even though it is still slow based on 400 yeah, so, years of the transatlantic slave. So, yeah. I, I think the, the wheels... <clears throat> yeah, I, I think the wheels are, are definitely moving. What we're, what we're seeing is that um, across all, all races, really, um, people are standing for a, a form of justice um, in the face of the injustice that, that has, has been suffered at the hands of, of the police in, in regards to George Floyd. And then, you know, in terms of the statues that, that have been brought into question, mm -hmm. um, we're seeing that this is um, a, a, across the globe. It's, it's really um, a, not, a, not a condition of race here. Yes, um, the, 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 it boils down to sort of uh, black people, but essentially it seems like most people who are attending these rallies are, are of multiple race. And that's, that's the thing that makes me feel that the wheels are a lot different to anything that I've particularly seen before. Um, and, I, and I think it's a, a credit to us as a human race that we um, we don't want this in, uh, this injustice. Um, so that's what's different for me. And, you know, Keisha highlights um, the complexity in, 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 in what we see as justice. Um, yeah. Is how does justice actually take its its rightful place? Does it take its place in regards to reparations or acknowledgements, whatever you want to call it, whether it's a monetary value placed on that or a simple apology? And that's the difficulty here, I think, in regards to 
how how we digest this as as a, as, a, as a group um, mm. of, of black people. So um, I think the the wheels are definitely moving. It's a different type of wheel. It's a, it's, a, it's it's more of a juggernaut than a than a small small Nissan. Um, and and I think it is picking up pace. I think it is it is moving. Um, I think speed of movement is interesting, isn't it? Because mm. we look at the speed and say, okay, well, it needs to move a lot quicker. But I, I do think that, that that things are moving in the right direction. I hope the questions continue to be generated, and I yeah. hope the momentum is 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 is, is accelerated in 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 that, in that way, shape, or form to try and get the changes that are required from a justice system. Well, if I go on to the banks now, two of Britain's largest companies have apologized for their role in the slave trade. Insurance giants Lloyds of London and pub chain Green King said they will devote large sums of to project assisting minorities after they were named in a database of companies connected to slavery compiled by University College London. The list is a sign of how Britain's past involvement with the slave trade, which has led to the tearing down of statues, has begun to impact on the corporate sector. Green King was founded in 1799 by Benjamin Green, who became one of 47,000 people who benefited from compensation paid to slave owners when slave was abolished in the British Empire in 1833. Now, the big question now is this, by the admission of guilt, by the admission that they have been complicit in the whole act of slavery, this, this gruesome um, act, which as you know, of forefathers or ancestors, by them saying, we are willing now to give money to, um, mm -hmm organization black companies minorities is this a form of reparation through the back door anyone go for it yeah and that and that's a question also for winston uh, winston Barton. <laughs> through the back door K K well, yeah. yeah yeah well i i do not consider that to be reparation i just consider that to be a donation um and they're, and, and they're prepared to so it's uh, like a donation Yes, I think they're they're willing to um, come to the table and actually have a conversation about their part or their role they play within the Atlantic um, slave trade. Um, yeah. and in my view, um, we need to follow due process, and the professor says that we need to um, follow the rule of law. And therefore, I, I, until we get to that process where um, a lot of these uh, organizations are held accountable. Um, and they're tried um, in the in uh, perhaps the Hague. Um, then that's how we can then determine um, what the um, what what they really should be paying us, or actually um, the reparation to to, to the different uh, Caribbean islands, for, for for instance. So at the moment, because they have they're not following um, due process, they are, are considered to be a donation. Um, which I'm sure a lot of the black community um, organization charities are happy to accept. But that to me is just a side matter. Um, we need to, um, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that they, they're they coming forward with this because what we what will probably happen and I suspect will happen is there's going to be a more a floodgates of maybe um, another um, a floodgates of, of, of other companies that will come forward to acknowledge their role or the part that they play. And also, hopefully, we'll actually, you know, go back to your, the initial point about um, the, the the wheels turning. Um, more um, of this conversation having th that being had, and also, uh, hopefully, we'll actually there's a lit litigation behind all of this. So yes, I think it's just it open a kind of worms by right? they 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 begin to acknowledge they 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 part. Yeah, David, is it now that they're sort of saying that they are um, they recognize that their founders have profited from slavery? Um, and argued against its abolition in the 1800s, he told the paper. Is there a sort of legal case? I'm, sorry, David, I know you're a doctor, but I'm just, I you know you're not a yeah. lawyer. But, but do you think that there is a sort of um, putting themselves out there now to be liable for serious? Yeah, I, 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 definitely, I definitely think that there's um, potential to take that standpoint. And I think that this, the, these gestures um, are going away to try and um, facilitate the the starting of those discussions, um, and and it is a positive gesture as as Keisha alluded to really, in that um, these companies and businesses didn't have to take this this line, um, but 
it, in essence, I think by taking this line, it's it's a positive stance. Um, you know, uh, it's in regards to sort of how they've approached the situation, and you know, saying uh, statements like, you know, we weren't particularly now generationally, we're not involved in that, and we don't condone slavery, but we recognise that our business has had a role to play in mm. the in the in the slave trade. Um, I think is a, is a positive statement. It's an acknowledgement of fact, um, rather than sort of skirting around the issue. And that's why I go back to this wheels of justice. Um, however you define justice, um, this is definitely different to anything that we've seen before. I've never seen a company come out uh, uh, or companies come out in this regard and acknowledge the facts. Um, and that just shows that we are growing uh, to an extent, to an extent as as a as, as a as a as a human race. Um, to try and change the the the, the rhetoric, uh, try and change the 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 the, the fact that um, the condoning of 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 injustices, especially in this instance against the against you know, a, a black man in in America, um, has has changed things. It's 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 unique. Uh, it, it's you know I think back to Rodney King, and that changed things. But this has definitely changed things. For the for the for the for the better, and I and I hope again that this momentum continues. So it, to answer your question, Chilbon, regarding the, the the being liable or for 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 future kind of um, sort of cases, that this this does open the floodgates in, in in one respect. But I think this that the gesture will help to dampen down any subsequent sort of uh, case going going down the stretch. Um, if, if I was to comment on this, I would say for me, it, it's, it shows um, some consciousness around the issue itself um, from a company point of view. And where companies now want to be seen as um, protecting um, uh, rights of people, particular um, race and background, culture and creed, I think this acknowledges, acknowledgement comes a, a long way. And, also, uh, and, and I think where uh, George Floyd has um, generated some jump, generated something within all of us. I think there's a, just a natural response there from uh, some companies who wants to uh, say, "Okay, we've put our hand up, we've been involved, and this is what we can do to help um, facilitate and, and to support um, some companies, some some organisations in the black community." Um, my uh, initial. Uh, problem with that, however, is um, as Keisha mentioned, is it's it's really based on their terms rather than what the community community wants. So um, they've decided that they'll be providing a donation rather than, as Keisha mentioned, a, a, any form of due process. So really, it's going to be within their terms of how they they um, provide um, a, a support to the communities. So in itself, um, overall, I think yes, there is progress there. I, I think as well. Um, um, naturally, I think it, it's it's good um, that we are moving in the right direction. But I think um, more and more companies, I would, I should be going way further, particularly those companies who's profit, um, profited um, uh, uh, greatly from um, uh, the Atlantic slave trade. And I think now where we've got conversations around more women and board levels, we should have now conversations as a direct result of more black and ethnic minorities on senior um, positions, particularly organizations that have actually profited on the back of um, slavery. I think that would be, to me, a great progress to demonstrate that they're serious about um, um, a reparation, the serious about a contribution and helping black and ethnic minorities, not on a smaller scale of just a, 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 a donation. But I think well, they could go further. Well, you mentioned about other companies coming out. And before I came on, I was doing a research. First in the day, I was looking at like companies or banks which are um, liable for slavery links. There was about a few, but now it has gotten bigger now. <laughs> Lloyd's, the Bank of England now has apologized for the inexcusable connections some former governors and directors had to the slave trade and says it will remove any images of them on display, you hear that? 
right? So the Bank of the the, 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 the Bank of the Bank. I was going to say the Bank of Jamaica. Who knows? Maybe the Bank of Jamaica could uh, you know, have some links because the Bank of Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything's going on. Libel symbol, libel, libel. What's your libels? <laughs> <laughs> Jamaicans are now focused on Christopher Columbus. They're ready to now start to tear on Christopher Columbus to say that he didn't come to Jamaica when um, Jamaica discovered him. It, it, I don't know. They, listen, guys, when, when I saw the anger and I saw the hurt in lots of people these past few days or weeks, um, you cannot excuse the fact that whether we like it or not, whether we feel the pain or not, people are literally out there hurting. They talk about there's this psychological impact, scars of slavery, which has come down over the years to the DNA of persons. They talk about that a lot. And when I just read, and I'm just seeing all the different um, persons apologizing or so, I believe it's a break. Do we think that the, the George Floyd, you know, I, I did a video the other day and, and I said, I'm a fire starter. You know, when I'm thinking about this guy named Marcus, the, the footballer, when he started that thing, trying to get the government to roll back and to um, pay these 15 pounds or so during the holiday period for families, which young people, young children, I call him the fire starter. Is George Floyd, you'd say, the fire starter that was that ember, that flame that is now being fueled, that is creating this ripple? <clears throat> Yeah. Well, yeah, well. Uh, uh, Kima, go, go, Kima, go, 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 Kima. Sorry, I, I was saying his daughter said he's going to change the world, and uh, I, I think we could see that happening. I think where you people now are beginning to think within themselves, not just organizations, but you know, white across the board, white black people are thinking about these injustices that's been happening for such a long time, and see. You know, sometimes they call it unconscious bias. You know, there's the things that happen in the workplace and people aren't aware of some of the racism, which are, to be honest, it's a direct connection of slavery and the slave trade. It's it's about where you have a white person is seen as to be more um, um, powerful uh, or in a superior position than a black person. So that's where racism actually started and that's where, it all comes from and it's it, it sort of manifested itself right across in every institution in um, United Kingdom and ac across the globe. And so that is a fundamental part of some of the things that we need to fix. Mm -hmm. And the only how we could fix that is if we have real and honest conversations mm -hmm. and, and not sweep things mm -hmm. under the carpet. And I think that's how we can move forward. So, yes, I think George Floyd is actually you know, has changed the world because they're making people, they're forcing people to think about um, their actions and some of the things that they've done or said or, or, or not may not be be aware of. Mm. Yeah. Now, in regards to the whole point about reparation that we're talking about as a wheel of justice turning and as a way, as a back door, which I said earlier, won't the... Won't the won't the Pan-Africanist movement or those who are for the reparation agenda that have been championing the cause, will they say, hey, stop a second here. Hey, don't just start giving us money and say, um, that's it. You all on on that and say you guys are all. No, we need to calculate something big time. Right? Is it money going to be the answer? How does money, you believe, can sort it out? Or should it be through systematic educational? I mean, Jocelyn Walters here, um, just said, uh, and I just put it up here. Uh, I would support an educational fund where black children can get scholarship to attend university free of charge. You know, what do you think about that? I mean, because charities, everybody's going to come now and say, "Hey, let's get some money, man." These guys are after a beck and call. I mean, while we're talking, something just flagged up, and and this is getting very interesting because guess what? Um, it, it's gone, but Facebook is donating a lot of money. For black organizations, Mark 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 Zuckerberg just posted that a while ago, so it it's it, it's bubbling up. Now, how do you see this? Not that it could control, but what do you think about what is happening now? How do you deal with reparations in the form of educational funding um, to help the, the black community? <clears throat> David, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna let Keisha go, but um, <laughs> in terms of. Um, 
In terms of uh, financial re remuneration, reparation, whatever you want to call it, um, I think the the my concern with that, I'm not saying it's not something that could be um, explored. But my concern with that is it kind of look, it can, the optics of which can look like a payoff for the black community. So it's yeah. an acceptance of fact that yes, um, yes, slavery has happened. Yes, um, we're accepting it. Take the money and then that's it okay and and i don't think that should be it if if that's if that's the if that's the way that the 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 the, 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 the not negotiations but that's the way that we accept this cash if if that's way you know, because there's, there's postulations that you know a family would get an x amount and that would be it but i don't think that's the way forward i think that the way forward and uh, julia kind of alludes to this is 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 in education is in is in um uh, is an ability to, to sort of own property, um, businesses, and that sort of thing. So spreading across the board rather than um, possibly being an individual um, kind of a payoff, because money doesn't solve the problem, but policies will change um, will change communities for for a lifetime. Um, and, and and I think that's my particular viewpoint on on how you go about um, constructively changing uh, policies that will help people of color um uh, and impoverished people to 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 go to go forward um my feelings on education is that ed university education should be free for everybody uh, uh, that's my feeling on the matter not just go across this particular issue but I, I think it should be free um but in terms of solving um the historic problems within the communities that we all live in and we all can see the injustice um that that, that exists uh, to a certain level, um, I th think that's probably what needs to needs to happen. We need to look at the policies, particularly the, the justice, the judicial reform, um, um, and we, we we look at so across the pond in America, where you know disproportionate number of of black people within the the prison systems there. That 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 really needs to be reformed and changed. Um, but you know, there's there's always an open discussion about reparations and what shape those reparations take. And and James Singleton um, um, on the sideline there said, I agree fully with what David is saying. Further dangers that money paid would be considered a reason to shut people's mouth, and it's racist will sh always shout its loudest. So it, it is like saying it's a payoff. Is that what you're saying? Got to be careful that it's yeah, just put up, put up and shut up. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. the thing. Put up and shut up, and that's 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 my worry. That's my concern. Um, money looks glorious and looks great, but it's not the be all and end all. The focus cannot be just on money. The focus has to be on other things, um, uh, like the the changes to education, to justice, to 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 empowering people to to progress. Yeah. Um, and and I think that's the that's the key for me. K K K Keisha said something earlier when we were talking, and it's about okay, Mark Zuckerberg throwing money there, that bank throwing money there, everybody's throwing, okay, guys, take that, take that, take that, yeah, take that, take that. But Kim said, What are our expectations? Keisha, that's what you said. What are, Absolutely. Expectations? What are we looking for? Can you expound on that a bit now? Put, make yes, I, I think I think it's where this is the right time to actually have the conversation about what exactly we at, within the black community really want. Um, mm -hmm. And we need to mobilize ourselves and actually have a one voice on this matter. Um, and I do um, agree um, about the, um, the, 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 you know, the first requirement obviously is to have the, acknowledge uh, what had happened to our people um, in the past. Um, so acknowledging is, is, is key and is important. Um, and, and once you acknowledge that, you are then you begin to take into account a number of factors. One of those is that our people, as in the Black community, have been systematically and disproportionately disadvantaged for many, many, many years. So the 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 the, the fact is is that we haven't been on an equal playing field with um, our white or Caucasian counterpart. And, and that is why not only acknowledgement is um, significant, uh, but also we need to begin to um, look to um, the, the organizations or institutions that have been funded uh, or, or receive funding from our, um, you know, our, our forefathers during the slave trade and, and for reparations. 
financial compensation is a must. And, and, and the reason being is that we cannot be on an equal playing field in terms of wealth generation um, without actually receiving this type of compensation. Um, and you can look at you know what happened in Germany even in 2013, where Germany acknowledged their wrong. And if you go to Germany right now, you're, you'll see that there is a museum that acknowledged the, hol the Holocaust. And you can spend, it's a, it's a massive, huge um, museum. I went there, spent more than, a, 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 well, very early in the morning, late in the day. It was a huge, huge, huge Holocaust um, museum that sets out and, and, and detail the atrocity that happened to the Jews. Now, we don't have something like that in the UK that, that I'm aware of as to that extent. I mean, there's a, I think there's a museum in, in Liverpool, but not to this extent. Um, and, 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 that, and that has to be factored in. We need to have um, a museum that, that recognizes the wrong of all um, that has happened to all people. Um, and also um, that Germany actually paid out over 600 and something million, about 650 million, I believe, to Jewish victims. And you may make the argument, and I believe that there's an argument for how do we create a direct link because you'll have to identify who are these victims. Well, um, Lloyd's Bank, um, I think it's um, Lloyd, Lloyd of Lloyd of Law, um, is it Lloyd's? Um, Lloyd. Yes, and 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 um, and Green King, they acknowledge that they've actually had contact or um, with the, the number of islands, and they named particularly St. Kitts and Montserrat. And so, therefore, they can identify these islands that they've actually exploited um, mm -hmm. and, and benefited from. And therefore, we can find the link and we can provide, a, 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 they, they should be able to um, fund or, 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 or um, invest in these islands that actually have been, they, they, they have been deprived, deprived because of the, 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 the level of um, atrocities that took place on those islands. So, so they, they, it is a, it's a complex matter. But before we can actually begin to address as to what we actually want as a people, we first need to mobilize ourselves and have a coordinated approach on the matter. And that points me to that. This points me to what Emmy Reynolds says: Black people need a solid manifesto. Absolutely, absolutely. And and that is the. I think one of our weaknesses as a, a, a as, as a people um, is that we have, we have been un, unable to not only say what we want, but actually to mobilize ourselves. And have an coordinated effect, uh, approach, and I believe um, it, you know I, I do support the Black Lives Matter um, campaign. Um, but when all when after the um, what we saw on on the television with um, Floyd, sorry, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> we are not um, absolutely hot. <laughs> so after we saw what was actually and and, and the um, with what happened to Floyd for eight and a. Eight, eight minutes and 45, 46 seconds, um, what, what we notice is that um, um, it, took, it took a while before people acknowledge or re rec recognize what was really happening. You know, there, there was a sudden shock. Uh, and, and, uh, um, and so we as a people, we need to just mobilize ourselves and, and, and say exactly from the outset, when we begin, when things are beginning to happen in our favor, turning towards our favor to say from the outset what, what we're looking for and what we probably should have had is probably a spokesperson to say, we need, uh, we need um, black history taught in school, we need um, co compensation or whatever, but we didn't have that uh, from the outset when the, we had the Black Lives Matter movement. And so suddenly there's an eruption of, you know, the, the whole marching took place and then suddenly the statues start coming down and then there's this debate about should that has happened, is it right to have a statue to not? What we should have actually had was somebody at the forefront to say, this is what we as a black community have been fighting for for a long time. Okay, this is very interesting. And I, see, I can see where we are going here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining um, tonight. Um, the topic is the wheel, are the wheels of justice turning when we look at the recent um, banks apologizing for slave trade, offering money. Even uh, Mark Zuckerberg is act offering money to organizations and for black, um, for, for charity. We saw the Cecil Road statue um, being designated now to be officially taken down. I don't know if the word torn down is the right thing, but to be removed from Oxford. Police charged with the killing of Rachel Brook. I mean, that is happening so fast. 11 charges. Um, Floyd, George Floyd, uh, four police officers. Of course, we won't know the full outcome until we actually get the verdict, which is going to be the king. Because, you know, the same thing. Rodney King, everybody was there waiting, waiting for that moment. And it all explodes. So therefore, we watch with bated breath as to what is happening. Those on Instagram, thank you for coming up. And for those also who are listening and watching, please share this video. I want to ask this question. And 
And and it, it is the same thing that Amy Reynolds talk about. Is it that right now things, I said it earlier while we're talking, that things are all over the place, um, 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 Kema. How do you think there could be a strategic pulling together of the black community? Because this is not going to be happening in the UK. It's going to be a rippling effect. Because I believe that the knees, the knees, not of the white man, but the needs of the black community is going to be pressing down, man. It's going to be pressing down until nobody's going to breathe at this moment. What do you got? What do you guys think about that? Well, I think the, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement in the United States is taking um, the lead on this, and um, a, a lot of um, the Black Lives Matter movement here as well is capitalizing on it. But as Keisha yeah, mentioned, yeah. There, the agenda is, is, is properly in your city, yes. The full agenda. <laughs> well, go on. Sorry. sorry. No, carry on, carry on. I was being facetious there with some. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I'm, I'm just saying uh, we just uh, as we need a coordinated approach, um, and I, and I think that's where there's a gap, there's a space for for um, a, a body or a person to, to fill to provide some leadership in terms of of what we want. I mean, there's a lot of black organizations out there. Um, but the, the problem we've had is not so many different messages. I mean, when the uh, statues started being pulling down and you have one of the Black Lives Matter um, uh, activists said that was not part of the plan. So mm. if that wasn't part of the plan, then obviously that we've sort of gone into a different route that we, we didn't really intend it. And obviously it means that the narrative it could, you know, naturally be um, obstructed or sort of gone off to a, veer off to a, to a different direction and you have, uh, the far right movement coming out and you know saying standing up for statues and you know but that that sort of negates the part the, the, the very point of what we want to do we want to have the argument about black lives matter the argument of black people the injustices not just you know um, in the justice system but in the workplace in the education system in the health care there is a lot of uh policies that needs to be looked at to see how they systematically um, disenfranch disenfranchised and disadvantaged black people right across the board. So we have to be absolutely careful if we are not um, speaking in one voice or in the same voice that the com conversation doesn't run away from us and sort of gone into different directions where we have no control over. And and that's 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 a problem I think there is at the moment. Right. Uh, so I, was, I think he was. I think he hit the nail. <laughs> So I'm going to say I think Kima's hit the nail on the head there. The, the unified voice, the the, the 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 she's already identified some of the problems. But I think that one of the the biggest problems is that when we talk about um, sort of maybe Jewish reparations, that's a that's a race there. Uh, the black black people are not a race. We are uh, multiple backgrounds, identities, and and grouping that together is really difficult yeah. then to channel a particular voice um, going forward. But I completely agree with what Kima had to say there in terms of how you tackle that. The thing is, you're looking at injustice, you're looking at um, different areas of, of injustice historically, and trying to get that equality across the board as a, as a, as a route to, to sort of solve um, this particular problem that we face. Um, and and, and, and sp somebody speaking on that particular point is fantastic if we had uh, somebody who was going to lead on that. Uh, I'm not going to suggest any names right now, but <laughs> if there were speakers on that particular topic, then I think that would be the way forward um, in, in, in regards to a response. Um, and then, you know, if, if we all channel our efforts in that particular regard, mm. I think there's got to be a, a payback here um, going down the line. And that's, that's my feeling on it. Um, th 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 we can't get distracted by other um, particular facets because then that dilutes the message uh, and makes it very difficult to, to, to sort of deliver any, any progressive change. And, and you're right, this is coming on different facets and it, it, there's a need for clear leadership at this moment because we've got to be careful at the same time, as we said, they're giving that, they're giving that. I've, I've seen Operation Black Vote, more than like Mr. Mr. Simon Woolley, Lord Woolley, maybe online on 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 um, Instagram. And of course, we've got key persons in the in the Jamaican, sorry, in the UK community who can actually start now to create some sort of leadership on the whole thing. Um, I've seen where the prime minister has appointed someone to do some commission. There are issues there. It is so important that the right people are brought to the table. But I want to just move quickly from the reparation bit and talk about, I had a video which I was going to show, but um, somehow it can't show. We, we saw Cecil Rhodes' statue um, designated now to be removed from Oxford, right? 
Is that a part of the wheels of justice turning? Is that some sort of justice factor or is it cosmetic? Uh, well, should I go first? <laughs> yeah, go, go, ladies first, go. <laughs> well, for me, I thought about this and to me, I, I wouldn't say it's cosmetic. I, I think it's important. I, important for black people, um, particularly, um, it's 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 a mental health well being issue. I think for me, um, when you have to pass a statue, and knowing that this person who has been celebrated or glorified um, is is uh, been a former slave owner, mm. um, or, or if you go to a school and the school is named after a former slave slave owner um people don't look at it in that real life experience and feeling people look at it as always oh, just a statue or oh, this person's a philanthropist yes but you know it's it, it, although it's 400 years there's decades and decades historical impact it has on people's livelihood you've got great grandparents who could tell you the stories of their fathers of, of having to you know work those plantations having to you know, um, um, prepare the the, the, the cotton, um, ship the cotton from the Caribbean to put on the, um, uh, prepare them for the ships to, to be transferred to, to um, United Kingdom. So you've got real life experience that you could hear about and it goes back for decades and years and years. So there's people who are carrying that uh, and, and to see statues being celebrated for a black person, it does has a, you know, a, a, a real effect, I think, psychologically. Um, to have to look that and say, okay, well, you know, this person had my forefather as as a slave, and now I've got to go to that person's school, or I'm passing that statue every day. So I think no, I think it's 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 right that the statues are being pulled down. I know that um, it's it's been a, a a question of great contention, but I I think the statues is rightly they're supposed to be in in history, and it's not just be sorry, not there should be a museum, but not just being in a museum, it has to be detailed of the atrocities, you know, the trauma that they've caused people. Uh, it, it's, it's a crime. It, should, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be told as if it's a crime. And, you know, history needs to actually say what happened and how it happened and how the cause and effect it has of generations of people. Yeah. yeah. David, David, what's your thought? Is it cosmetic or is it a part of the wheel of justice turning? I think uh, it's the end of the roads for roads. Um, I think it's 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 partly uh, it's partly cosmetic. Let's stop a second. Let's stop a second. End of the road for roads. What about all the road cars? What about those road colours? What's that? Sorry. What about all those road colours? Well, from that's an interesting oh, thing. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. So I, what I think will happen. Um, there's there's a th couple of things. I think that the optics now has definitely changed given the butterfly effect from George Floyd, okay? So this statue ha has been there for many a year. Um, there have been um, protests to, to bring the statue down for many a year, but the optics mm. now has changed, okay? Um, and part of the optics has changed um, because of George Floyd, but obviously there's been an economic issue here as well because um, reportedly um, the, the, the scholarships that were being provided the donors have been provided for the college um, would have been pulled had the statue come down earlier. Um, um, so my feeling is that obviously the economics behind this um, is that you know it needs to, it, it, it was to be decided that it's going to come down. The, 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 so the statue is going to be removed, hopefully put into a museum and again reflected on as Kima has, has, has touched on. Now, what I think will probably happen is that other donors will come forward to support the college because the the, the, the money still needs to come from some kind of source. Um, and so you'll probably just have that source come from a different a different area or a different agenda, um, which 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 will 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 change the 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 the, the way that that college is now viewed. Um, it, it, this touches back on the discussion of, of of statues that we had about a week ago, really, and that um, a, a, a democratic view to, to to remove these statues has been taken, um, and. Um, there was a question I remember uh, last week that we really didn't touch on, and who is going to decide whether the statue goes or remains? Well, in this circumstance, we've seen that the, that decision has been taken independently by a college. Right. Um, they've looked at the statue, the institutions looked at it themselves and said, okay, look, we need to do something. So 
institutions around um, and, and, and councils around will look at their statues and make that decision um, uh, in, a, in, a, in, their, in their way, shape or form. But I guess the, the democratic viewpoint of allowing people to vote on it is another way of, 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 of trying to solve um, this particular issue. Um, uh, and that's my that's my viewpoint on on, on the statues and, and and whether this particular statue in itself is 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 something uh, to be frowned on or not. Yeah. It's interesting that um, Emil Reynolds, uh, I did not know he said about what about the road scholarship and Emil actually I said it without even seeing what he wrote. <clears throat> I put mm. it on the article. So we're all in one sync here with with the guests on the side there. Um, Keisha, the question to you: cosmetic or is it um, necessary? Is it a part of the the justice because justice sometimes many people will say i don't want anything some people say some people say i want him dead eye for an eye tooth for a tooth kill him dead another person say, murder i don't want that i just want to get my apology for the person I, you know you have cases sometimes where a person i just want to meet the murderer of my son yeah social justice where you know yeah. you just want to see the murderer and say get the person to write a letter i'll say to yeah. you I'm yeah. sorry, and that's sufficient for some people. Yeah. So, so, is it this? Is this what? Is this a form of justice which is coming out with these statues, even though the statues are symbols and they don't have any feeling? But is it sending a message deep to the crux, the core? Well, the I think it might. It might be. It may be justice for those who who live in the area where there's statues that represent. Um, uh, a history that they that, uh, an unpleasant history and they have to live with that or see that every day as they you know walk by so mm -hmm. they, they you know there's a group of people um, who are satisfied that, that they have been removed um, but for me I'm looking at the bigger picture uh, or, or, or there is a there's a major uh, or there's a bigger um, issue here that other, other than just um, the statutes you know um, when I did my degree around in sociology and international development one of one paper, a paper that I had to had um, um, write. The, the question that was asked was, um, "What are the benefits of of slavery?" That was I was remember I remember being the only black person in that um, in that class, mm -hmm. and everyone I, I, and the books that they gave us and they taught us was actually they actually set out the benefits of slavery. And because I came from the Caribbean and I studied Caribbean history. Um, I was really, I was almost, I was really in distraught. I went to see the teacher about it and complained because I was horrified that they, they were, they, there's a question paper on that, that people, uh, you, you see white cl classmates actually were keen in writing and something that, you know, they, they, they look at the beneficial side of slavery, which is of course, you know, um, wealth and developing up their, 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 their cities and uh, Liverpool and Bristol and all that. So as far as they're concerned, there's, they, 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 there's a miseducation about what slavery really well, it is. And that's why I'm passionate about this issue because as far as, far as I'm concerned, there is, um, we, we, we as a, a people now, this is the, the opportune time, I suppose, where we the, the, a lot of institution and organization need to actually review and reflect on some of these things that have been taught and actually, um, you know, per perpetuated for years, you know, um, the miseducation of what the reality of what slavery was really about. Um, mm. and, and that is why it's important as far as I'm concerned to have the conversation about education, um, black history within schools and taught at university level, the reality of what it's, what, what it's about. And that's my, that's so add to, to my mind, I understand there are people who, you know, have the, the psychological issue around seeing a slaver um, being, um, you know, perpetuated on, uh, 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 you know, or represented as a statue. Um, and that is sufficient for them. But for me, given my experience, my lived experience growing up in the Caribbean, um, see, um, going to, you know, um, doing my GCSE and haven't been taught about black history in well, Caribbean or black British history um, at GCSE level, went off to university to be told to write a paper on the benefits of slavery. I mean, yeah. it had an effect yeah. on me um, and going to school and actually, uh, going to work. And then it took me a time to actually, you know, after a while, I, I understand what, um, discrimination in the workplace is about or you, you know so you you begin to have this lived experience as to how you are being systematically disadvantaged as an individual and the fact that you are they, they haven't been there's a false um teaching that's that's actually been going on for years um within the school the, the, the educational system and so that is what to me is more fundamental than actually removing of a statute Yes. In in the last eight minutes of our discussion now, 
because this will go on. Someone said, and I saw a video or I saw a post which said, the ancestors of slave traders are actually in the House of Lords. <laughs> they're, they're MPs and they're in the House of Lords and they're on yeah. board, they're at board level. Yes. They're in senior management position. Yeah. They're, they yeah. are they are profiting cur uh, currently, uh, yeah. are benefiting from all of it. it it's the team yes. touched on, on it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where we need to look at. So the question now is, where do we go from here? Because I, 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 I think one of the key things is about the need for leadership. But in summing up now, where do we go from here now with this? Because it is very important that the, the focus is very directed and strategically set at this moment. Because what people have been asking for years, it's finally somehow in our hands, especially this injustice. No matter what we say, there's this clear injustice which has happened. In South Africa, you have had the Reconciliation Commission. I think in America, I don't believe that they have had something like a Reconciliation Commission or something like that. I don't think America government ever apologized for slavery. I don't know. David, what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think in terms of an apology, if again it goes back to this whole directive of as as to what is wanted from black people, mm. if that's an overarching um, feeling that an apology is required, I personally think that it makes makes sense. Apology is required, um, then then that's what is required to try and um, quell um, and people's anxiety, fears, etc. Going forward. Um, in terms of how and what we do moving forward, well, we've touched on um, an idea of having a, a form of leadership, um, and 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 in terms of getting a directive, um, and, it, and it really boils down to reducing the inequalities that exist, um, and by reducing those inequalities, it lifts people up. It, it lifts up people to to feel included within the society itself. And if you can eradicate or reduce, I don't think you can eradicate because inequalities will will always exist in, in in some way, shape, or form. But if you can reduce those um, those inequalities that have really um, been shone uh, a light on by COVID and and its and its inequalities of health, for example, um, we need to really focus in on how we lift those equalities. So I know that we've 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 got a COVID report. We have uh, seven recommendations that have been given and driven by. Um, the the government, and now we need um, a way of implementing those recommendations. We need answers as to how the how the government is going to implement those particular recommendations, and how communities are going to respond to to those recommendations as well. Um, so uh, from from a, from from a from a, a, a really long uh, view to it to a to a to a short view of of how we approach the situation, um, I think we've got two different angles to approach it. Long term. We, we need some leadership, and in terms of short term, we need to um, look at the action plans of, of the recommendations from the COVID report um, and, and how that will help from an inequality point of view uh, um, to, 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 to benefit benefit us all. <clears throat> Keisha came up <clears throat> in summing up, what's your last word in, in moving forward as how we move forward with this whole thing now? Well, um, I remember in um, the Caribbean, in uh, year six, I think I was, uh, my teacher um, taught us a quote, and uh, you know it very well, um, Silborn. It, it, it's, it's from Marcus Garvey, and it's pretty much, I, I, it's always stick in my head because it's so important about a people who doesn't know. Um, help me here. <laughs> are people with our, are people with our knowledge of their past is like a true exactly yeah, yeah, twins. absolutely they bounce off each other ladies and gentlemen yeah so a people without knowledge of their past is like a tree without roots and it's so important it's so significant that education um is paramount we can't move forward unless we begin to redress some of this miseducation uh, that we've had in the past. And in order to do that as well, I think we have to be honest with ourselves as a people, and not just Black people, but also um, people in the uh, associate organisations, uh, people of authority, they need to be um, more transparent. And also an apology, I think, is essential as well, because that means that, you know, they've acknowledged um, the part that... Um, 
um, the transatlantic part, uh, um, the part of the transatlantic um, trade yes. um, slave. So it's, it's, it's essential that we have the education um, part of it. It's essential that um, there's an apology and also where there's reparations of compensation as well. Yes, okay. And, um, and as Keisha deal with the future, <laughs> it's important. Let them hear what is going on. And keep yeah, I want to know their views too. I would love yeah, to hear multi their views. Multitasking. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and keep uh, your 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 views as to the way forward as we wrap up with what's going well, on. Well, the now. way forward is for us to continue having uh the conversation, discuss this, um, and and be transparent as possible. Um they to me in um there has, has been a reluctancy to have this conversation in your workplace. Um, they, at, at one point, I remember one of my colleagues uh, asked me, is it Keisha, is it okay to call you black or to say mm -hmm. that you're black or to call you a woman of color? Would you get offended? And this was a white person. And actually, she asked me that question last year. And I was yes. a bit surprised that, um, I, and I, I suppose she was really relieved when I said, no, I'm not offended by it. And again, I'm working in an environment where there's predominantly white people. So now, so that now that they actually, you know, visit encountering or meeting a black person, they kind of they, there's like um, questions as to how do I respond or how do I uh, um, um, communicate or, or or work with this a particular person. Um, and, and so there's this, we need to continue this conversation um, and 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 be transparent about how we feel about the the, the matter. Um, also. Um, what we do need to do, and I think it's very important. Um, David touched on it: the the need for um, having a uh, having a leader um, to take this yeah. forward, uh, or even a committee, a group of people who with different expertise, um, yeah. you know, um, from legal to um, psychological. Because you know, Kima talk about um, the the psychological effect it has on people who um, recall the experiences of their forefathers, grandparents, talking about. Yeah you know, their experiences um, and, and coming, obviously, living in the UK and see, seeing, um, you know, the, 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 the wealth being generated through that band off the backs of your forefathers and um, clearly looking at what's happening uh, with to, what happened to um, George Floyd and that, that mm -hmm. just watching it for, for a few minutes, the, the, the shock um, that, that, that has happened, um, the effect that they actually have on the black community, you know, because some of some people actually experience, um, you know, um, discrimination or um, injustices by the because of through the police force, yeah. and so, um, so, so, so we need to not only have the conversation, but actually have a a, a committee or a, a group of people who are willing to, to to push forward this matter. I do believe, um, you know, as as the Jews, they actually got compensation. Um, we we need to actually have uh, you know there's there's discussion about a museum uh, putting all these statues in museum. I think they need to have a similar museum set up for um, the, the slave trade and actually you know a free mu museum just like in uh, the, the Holocaust um, the museum in Germany um, and and set out not just only you know because every island you, you know um, they, I think there's over three hundred something islands three hundred sixty something islands in the Caribbean. Yeah. All of us, uh, all of those islands actually have their own experiences, and that need to be discussed and actually explored and actually, um, um, you know, shared and recorded within the the, the the museums here in the UK. They need to understand how their wealth were generated, and that and and that is a fact. And I believe that is important because it will aid you know the discussions even at university level when there yeah. when there, is, there seems to be a mis miseducation there. From my experience, education is very key. That's one of the things there. And and David, in summing up your last word and the way forward, I, I don't know if you said yeah. it before. Oh, yeah, just, yeah. 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 I mean, the, the, the way forward we've touched on, we've said that we need leadership. We need to look at the the historic uh, injustices and yeah. obviously have a, a level playing field. And, in, in, and by doing, by looking and examining the inequalities and again, touching on COVID, um, that's, that's just really from a health point of view, um, examine those injustices uh, and in, in the inequality that exists. We need to try and use that as a as a basis for going forward, um, and and and, act, and and add that an action plan to the to the uh, recommendations that the government have have, have have given in regards to their report um, just earlier this week. So that that's that's my feeling from a from a health point of view. Um, I think health inequality um, is 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 an injustice in itself, um, oh, and we need yeah. to really target. 
that yeah. as, as, a, as a basis going forward. But there are many different ways to, 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 to approach this problem, but leadership is key. Yeah. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard and we have seen and we are watching and we have seen the advent of the knee upon the neck of George Floyd, which has been somewhat a catalyst. It's like a fire, an ember that is just burning. And what does that mean now? There's fuel and it has been fueled. The wheels of justice, is it turning? And some is saying it's going slow, some is saying it's going fast, but nobody can deny that it is turning. The cry for no justice, no peace, no justice, that's been a cry, no peace, no justice. Well, we are seeing something which is happening now. We're seeing banks actually acknowledging the fact that they were part of this brutal, this terrible act of slavery, dehumanizing people, raping them, you know, murdering them, you know, and at the same time, recognizing that they were complicit in it. Now they are ready to offer some level of compensation and they have reached out to the black community to say, hey, we want to do this. Mark Zuckerberg has also said as well, want to reach out as well. Companies are saying they want to reach out as well. The Bank of England is saying they are going to start to remove governors who are complicit in it at the same time. Not in it, but in it, right? And also what we are seeing is the statues being removed. Is that a form of justice as well? We learned today that psychologically, it can be a social justice that helps someone to move forward. Because many people have been crying out for acknowledgement, just say that you're wrong. We walk around with people every day. They're saying now beyond even the slave traders that their families are still positioned in the heart of power in the government structure. What do we do in next? It, right? Right. And also, what we're seeing is the and, uh, and 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 so so therefore now what we've come to the conclusion like is that there's a need for clear leadership. And I'm sure everyone is agree. Clear leadership, targeted, focused, not just think going piecemeal. <laughs> As someone said, keep an eye wide open because the British government are the masters of divide and rule and if we get distracted the cause is finished so we cannot afford to be get distracted somehow somehow the knee has got to be pressed on the neck on the remnants of the oppressors and for those who are not acknowledging it now this is not saying it in a very derogatory way to say we need to start a fresh knee but it is actually saying you've got to put the pressure till it breaks until there can be a level of compensation and there can be a level of reparation and somehow, as some other person says, not just the money, but it is how one can bring the or help the black community to reach to another level with education as much as possible. Statues goes in museums as well. Some people doesn't matter, but we cannot dismiss the fact that the majority are scarred emotionally. The DNA has passed down, and therefore the time has come without a doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my summing up. And I want to thank you so much for coming on today. I want to thank David Burton, um, Ms. Kima, Kima Allen, and Keisha Allen, and their sidekick there in the background, which is our son. Future. Well, you, you call him sidekick. I think he's probably the next leader. He could be <laughs> our leader. You know, like, he, just, he was just showing his face now. And you're laughing, but maybe that's the key. Yeah, yeah, the leader, the next leader. And, and, the next and, leader's uh, there, right. The next, yeah, and, and, and to, tomorrow I've got two leaders, I think a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old young lady um, from Miss Teen Caribbean UK, just to hear their views on the same topic as well, the future. These are the persons going to be taking care of us. So I think I think every Friday now I'm going to try to create this opportunity where, where young people can actually come on and share their views as much as possible as well, because we've got to keep the knees upon the neck of decision. Is that bad? The knees on the neck of decision? Does that sound bad? That's not like you're replicating, <laughs> you know. So, and 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 for those persons, um, James Singleton, David, David Silburn, in addition, this is superb. Why not start a group? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, 2020 and, giving us all insight yeah. and vision. See, There's some positives always, in 2020. Yeah. It's been a good listen. And, and and the most important thing as well, what is very interesting is that. This is what lockdown has done. Lockdown has inspired us, you know, in some respect, you know. 
guys, listen. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for coming on and I um, want to wish you a good night as well. Thank you for giving up your special time, David, Keisha, and Kim. Bye-bye. Yeah. Take and care. Another great, time. Uh, we see you all tomorrow night at 8 o'clock with um, two young ladies from um, Miss Teen Caribbean UK, 15 and 16 years of age. To hear their views. The young has come to speak and they're coming to take over. No justice, no peace. <laughs> And also Monday, mm -hmm. Dina Coy. But this was going to be interesting. Dina Coy, he's got the answer now to mobilize the black diaspora to position <laughs> ourselves in a strong way to take back what is ours. All right? Looking guys. forward to that. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. Good, good, good. Thank you, guys.